Hi everybody, how's it going? My name is Jeremy Siskin and I'm the author of these books, Jazz Piano Fundamentals. Pew, pew, pew. Book two. And playing solo jazz piano. All right, those are my sound effects for today. Um, Sylvie wrote in and she asked me to teach a lesson on crystal silence. And you know what? I didn't have any better ideas today. So I'm teaching a lesson on Shikriya's piece crystal silence. So let's take a look at this lead sheet. Um, and let me, let me play a little version for you here. So, uh, Sylvie's first question was, is this a modal tune? And my answer in a word would be yes. I think it is. Um, so, but it's actually a slightly more interesting answer than that, I think. Things are not really purely modal or tonal. Um, let's take a moment and step back and think about what those two words mean. Um, my definition of modal is that it does not have a leading tone or the leading tone does not play a central role. Okay. Which means that in a piece like this, we really shouldn't be seeing E dominant sevens. If we're buying that this is an A minor, which I think it is, um, because that E seven has that G sharp, right? If it's a tonal piece, we're going to feel that. Um, now, okay, on the other hand, tonal means that that feeling of a leading tone is really kind of central to what we're doing. It's central to the project of the piece, right? If we're playing autumn leaves and we don't have this chord, um, then we're really probably missing something important. So what's interesting about this uh, experience here is that we do a couple times actually get this E7. Now, it's interesting that this first time, highlighting it in yellow here, it does resolve to A minor, as we might expect. But the next couple times, it actually, it doesn't act as a five chord. It kind of acts as a little departure. And when we actually do get a cadence, it's actually G sus going to A minor. But there are a few places where we, we do have this five chord. So, you know, to me, that doesn't necessarily mean it's 0% modal or 100% modal, um, but the five chord to me is like not the important thing here as it would be in some other pieces. And considering how few of them there are, I count this as modal. The other thing that makes this modal is that we really hear, you know, especially based on this very first melody note, that we are in a Dorian. We're not in a minor. Right, we must be in a Dorian or a like Aeolian or something else, but 
uh, we're not in a normal A minor key because it's that minor seven. Let me just explain that a little bit more. Minor keys will have a raised seventh because that's how we know if we're in a minor key. Right? We would need a G sharp to know if we're in the key of A minor. And so that G natural, it cancels out the possibility for a G sharp. So when we have that G natural, we know we're not in a traditional A minor tonal key sound. So then the question becomes, maybe, <laughs> uh, what is making this piece work? And I have a very strong opinion on that, which is that it's pentatonics, okay? Because like, if you look at the chords, they might seem somewhat random, right? Okay, A minor and E minor, those go together. They could be like within the key center of G major-ish, A minor, E minor, but then, ooh, F, F major, that's not really that close by. But maybe like those three chords all belong to C major, okay. B minor, well, hmm, that's got an F sharp and it's right next to F major, so that's weird. And then we really get a curveball if we're thinking in this way of like, what key are we in? B major seven sharp 11, huh, that could be related to F major, but not really to the B minor. So why is it that all of these keys, all these chords feel so related? Well, the answer actually is much more in the melody than it is in the harmony. So if we look in the melody, in these first four or so bars, everything minus one pitch, well, one pitch that happens twice, um, is part of the G major or E minor pentatonic. All right, that would be G, A, B, D, and E. All right, so we have those Cs, but notice the Cs are always passing in between the Ds and the Bs. Okay, so. And for this reason, also because, um, shoot, here, I'm gonna cross all this out. Because we have this G here, to me it seems pretty imperative that we color this B minor seven with a flat six. Otherwise it sounds pretty weird to me. Okay, similarly, I would probably color this E minor with a flat six. Um, not, not, not for the least of reasons that we have a C natural there, so. Okay, so what's tying these chords together thus far, in my opinion, is that they're all reflecting this G pentatonic scale or E minor. Now, I think at this point here, we switch to a C major or A minor pentatonic. And this is actually kind of brilliant. Let's think about it. It's like, let's call it E minor pentatonic here. Right, that's the dominant of our tonal center of A. And then we have an A minor pentatonic here. This is our tonic. So it's like four bars kind of more tense than four bars returning to home, right? And you can see that the notes here, A, C, D, E, G, right? Every one of these notes, B until our dominant chord comes from that pentatonic. Furthermore, like the other thing that's super cool is that we don't actually get to an A in these last four measures until, you know, I guess technically this little ornament here, but until the very end, we play every no other note. <laughs> So it's kind of interesting, you know, we think of modal pieces as being like, as diminishing the cadence or diminishing the importance of the cadence. But here this cadence is actually so full of richness. 
we get the note outside of the pentatonic, and then we finally get that note that's been missing from the pentatonic. So this is interesting in terms of, you know, obviously just analyzing what Chick Corea did, but it can also be interesting in terms of coming up with your own solo, right? Because if it's me, I'm probably gonna focus on that E minor pentatonic for the first four bars, and then the A minor pentatonic for the second four bars. Let's see how that works out. So E minor pentatonic. switch here. It's only one note different, it's just the B moves to C. I'll try one more A section. chords are secondary. The chords are just window dressing, and it's the pentatonics that hold it together. So for instance, this B minor, you know, one thing that we probably are never supposed to do over a B minor is play a C natural. Right, sounds pretty bad. <laughs> but in this context, taking it from the B major 7, weird to play a C sharp. Now, <laughs> don't get mad at me, but this also like raises the possibility of doing the other thing, of taking these chords very literally and playing, you know, sixth and ninth that don't belong, in which case it's going to sound, uh, out isn't the word, but I would count that as modal interchange. Like if we played this E minor purely Dorian, if we played this B minor purely Dorian, and if we highlighted the modes of like the Dorian, if we highlighted the notes that belong to that Dorian mode versus the Phrygian or Aeolian, it's gonna sound pretty interesting. Same thing if like, even if we just highlight the F sharp on the A minor seven, the note that's not in the F, uh, in the pentatonic, it's all gonna sound pretty interesting. So check out what happens if I try to emphasize the quote unquote wrong notes or the, the notes that are not part of that, those pentatonics. Naturally want to be colored, which I think is something it's something that we do in modal context So just talking about the bridge for just a second I, I don't think it's very difficult to see the architecture of the bridge, uh, right? It's, it's totally based on Just a, a scale going down and it's kind of interesting because it's a We could say it's a C scale You could say it's an A minor or even a Dorian scale quite sounds like the melody, right? It sound, to me, it sounds very much like maybe a coincidence, maybe not. But the other thing that, you know, I probably don't have to point out to you is that the very first note is not diatonic, but it is 
just die talking to a Dorian. So it doesn't really actually feel like a big surprise when we get to that F sharp. It feels interesting. And then Chicory also takes the opportunity to add two more notes that are outside of our key that aren't part of this descending scale. take a pretty kind of crazy little left turn here into flat key land. So that's pretty interesting. So, you know, that leaves us out on a limb in terms of how to solo over this. Um, so one strategy would be to stay close to these notes, notes that I've circled in red. <laughs> chords somewhat at face value and I'd probably you know try to group some of them into groups of two you know the D major and A I think could probably both use the same scale they could both use a version of A Dorian <laughs> really want to be flat major sound you're not going to get it but you're gonna to have to treat this part a little bit more like a tonal piece i think in that you really have to look at scales for each of these if you really want my suggestions for scales um yeah i would use a dorian or d mixolydian for these two what the heck let's use f dorian for these two um I'd probably use C harmonic major, which is like C major with flat six. Probably G Dorian. And then some sort of a B altered and E altered. Now you might be wondering, why am I using the lowered seventh for these two major chords, right? A Dorian's gonna have a C natural, F Dorian's gonna have an A flat. Um, so I, I could switch twice. I could go, but I'm pretty happy grouping those together. Just depends how much work you wanna do. such a pattern on the bridge, right? All of these chords are related by fourth, right? D goes down a fourth to A, B flat goes down a fourth to F, C goes down a fourth to G. And it's always major to minor, major to minor, major to minor. So there's kind of this interesting relationship going on. And I would definitely think about these in pairs, even if you can't use the exact same scale. Um, to me, this is like kind of four pairs of chords in the bridge. All right, so I hope that helps. I hope it was interesting. Um, if you like that, you'll probably really enjoy playing solo jazz piano. There's a bunch in here about Chick Corea and other cool stuff. Um, thanks for supporting. 
And uh, why don't you uh, why don't you uh, comment with, uh, with your favorite kind of crystal? Because we all have our favorite kind of crystal. Uh, if you've got one, and I'll see you around soon.